So Dr. Sears, ketogenic diets, this is something we, we hear about often over the past, I don't know, it's always coming in and out of circulation, don't you say? Well, it does. It's, it's like the waves. They come in and they come out. You know, uh, every 20 years, uh, ketogenic diets reemerge as a new wonder diet. It takes about a generation for people to say, hey, it didn't work. Well, you know, there are some pros and there's some cons to ketogenic diets. But first of all, what we have to do is define what a ketogenic diet is. And that's difficult. A classic ketogenic diet says, I eat lots of fat and very little protein and very little carbohydrate. So you're saying, that's not very palatable. You say, you're right. Uh, now, a more modified ketogenic diet, you're eating a little less fat, a little more protein, but very low amounts of carbohydrate. Well, there's a very large range there. So you have to define, is it a, really a strict ketogenic diet or a modified ketogenic diet? Mm -hmm. So what would you say, you, you, so you're right, we kind of associate ketogenic with bacon and high fat meats and eggs and stuff like that. Is there any pros of following this kind of eating plan? There definitely are. Uh, you know, one of the aspects, you'll get rapid weight loss. And they mentioned I say weight loss, not fat loss. Uh, the reason why, because a ketogenic diet, either high or low, is one that's low in carbohydrates. And in the body, in the liver particularly, you basically when you burn fat, you're converting it to carbon dioxide and water. But to do that, you need carbohydrates, which are stored primarily in the liver. Now, what happens when you basically use up all the carbohydrates in the liver? Got to go for another source. Well, you also, now the liver doesn't need the water that really uh, hydrate the carbohydrates. So you get a, a lot of dehydration. Mm -hmm. That's not fat loss. That's weight loss. Right. Another pro for a ketogenic diet, I don't have to think as much. You say, oh, do I have to balance my diet, you know, protein, carbohydrate, and fat? Ah, throw out the carbohydrates and one less thing to worry about. Well, that's fine for basically reducing your worry level, but it doesn't make any good sense from a metabolic aspect. And another good point for a ketogenic diet, because you are at least on a modified ketogenic diet, eating more protein, you'll be more satiated because protein basically releases hormones from the gut that go to the brain to say, stop eating. So those are some of the benefits of a ketogenic diet. Okay, so if we're following the diet, not that we're following the diet, but you're going to see uh, the, the quick weight loss because of the water. You're going to remove the carbohydrates from the diet so there's less thinking. And then you're eating more protein so you have less hunger. So, all right, let's, let's hear the cons. And now we've got a lot, a lot more <laughs> cons. A lot more cons. Well, we have two ways to look at this, anecdotal data or real clinical data. Well, that's why we did a, I thought was the, uh, the, fine, the definitive study published in 2007, a very highly controlled study of the zone diet versus a ketogenic diet. They were equal in calories. They were equal in protein. So the only variation was basically the balance of carbohydrate to protein. So what did we find? Well, one, the people who basically followed the zone diet or followed the ketogenic diet were basically losing more calcium. It was coming from their bones. Two, uh, the, uh, in terms of fat loss, the zone diet was superior. In terms of fatigue, the zone diet was superior. In every parameter we can measure, the zone diet was superior to the ketogenic diet. And we are treating these people like lab rats. Now, there was one aspect that the, the uh, ketogenic diet was superior to the zone diet. And that was increasing inflammation. So I said, okay, I see there's, the zone diet was a winner, but increasing inflammation, that's something I don't want. Saying, exactly. So I thought that would put it to rest. That's why you do science. But then I said, every 20 years, it reemerges as a new wonder diet. And saying, guys, don't you read the literature? Mm -hmm. But the fact is, it's back again. And yet people say, why, is, why do I regain my weight? Well, the primary reason is because when you basically go into a state of ketosis, uh, what the body does, and basically this is a stress response, the body 
turns out more of the hormone cortisol. And cortisol is now used to break down muscle mass and convert it into glucose for the brain. If you had no glucose in the blood, you would die. The brain would basically stop functioning. So basically, this is a truly a stress situation. Now that excess cortisol needed to basically break down muscle into glucose for the brain also causes insulin resistance. And that's why you gain weight in the first place. So you see the data say, you see quick, rapid weight loss, primarily water, but at the end of an extended period of time, you see much of that weight being regained, now not as water, but now as fat. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Sears, one other point I want to comment on, the, the dietitian and me, is the other thing about this diet is because it's low in um, carbohydrate, it's also lacking in fiber. So do you want to talk about that real quick, too, as one of the cons? And this is one of the, really the worst cons. <clears throat> There's two reasons why we want to eat carbohydrates, especially non-starchy carbohydrates. One fiber. I say, fiber, that's so boring. Actually, it's quite, quite important because fiber, we can't use the fiber, but the microbes in our gut can. And what does that mean? That supplies the energy to the cells at the interface between the gut and our body to keep them healthy, to prevent basically leakage, a leaky gut. Uh, so without adequate fiber, you can't make these short-chain fatty acids called primarily butyric acid. But they say, but oh, but a ketogenic diet makes uh, three hydroxybutyric acid. Well, those are two different fatty acids. And the, the three hydroxybutyric acid, which is known as the ketone body, basically is not nearly as effective in terms of basically doing all the things these short chain fatty acids can do. Because they do more than just feed the cells at the surface of the gut uh, uh, body interface, they are also powerful signaling agents. They control epigenetics. They're signaling agents that basically enhance the, the satiety signals from the gut, from the protein, to the brain. And it's been shown that the butyric acid is vastly more superior than the 3-hydroxy butyric acid in basically utilizing those systems. Second problem, if you don't eat carbohydrates, you won't get polyphenols. These are the chemicals that give fruits and vegetables their color. And for literally centuries, centuries, that's all we thought they did. But now we know, know they do far more. What they are, if they are broken down and absorbed by the body, they can activate our metabolism, especially AMPK to be activated. And it's AMPK that's the real key. That's the, basically the controlling switch that burns fat faster. Yes, a, a ketogenic diet will basically cause the... Uh, loss of water faster than the zone diet, but it will not burn fat faster. We've shown that. Mm-hmm. So what do we have is all these problems that we see inherent with a ketogenic diet. But like I said, everything in nutrition, there are pros mm-hmm. and there are cons. Now, compared to a uh, the zone diet, I'd give basically, uh, if I give the zone diet an A, we'll give <laughs> the ketogenic diet a D minus. All right. <laughs> well, and I, I think one of the things, the most important thing you address too, is I think people go on the ketogenic diet because they're really enticed by this quick weight loss. But here you're telling us that, hey, you can follow the zone diet. You're going to lose body fat, which is more important, even if you're not seeing that weight loss as fast, but also the other health benefits of consuming the zone diet from the lots of fruits and vegetables, the hormonal balance. Um, there's really so many, so many pros uh, from following the eating plan. The diet is complex. And, uh, but when we try to simplify it too much, we get ourselves in trouble. Remember the word diet comes from the Greek root, which means way of life. So a diet is not a short-term period to lose weight. A diet is something to be followed for a lifetime. For what purpose? To live longer and live better. Excellent. So Dr. Sears, we didn't really talk too, too much about the zone diet, but if people are interested in learning more, where should they go for additional information? Well, uh, I'd go to drsears.com. And the reason is because, as I said, metabolism is complex. And our key to unlock the mysteries of metabolism lies in the diet. And on that site, we try to give you the insights of what metabolism does, how to control it, and how to use your diet as a powerful drug be used on a lifetime basis 
to give that, that basically greater health span we all hope for. For more on this subject and many other topics on the science of wellness, go to drsears.com.